stranger to a friend Give it such a way surrender to that energy and to be a part of it. Help us all to recognize the divine within our hearts and within one another and to speak with one voice for the good of the beautiful community we call our world. Let us lay aside our egos and align ourselves with the simple truth that the universe wants only our good and that what is good for us one must also be good for all in order to be truly in divine thinking. Let us rejoice in the happiness and the serenity that we have planted and are now reaping, and let us to continue to behave in a way that fosters more love and joy to be planted in our hearts and our minds, so that we can continue to know and do the work in our hearts and minds that we were born to do and to show us how to share this love and joy with the world so that your will is done and your message is communicated 
Let us come together in a spirit of gratitude for the abundance and prosperity we are already experiencing, both individually and in our community. We say thank you. We thank you for each and every person involved with our world. Each of us is a beautiful outpouring of your perfection. We are so grateful for the combining of our hearts, minds, and for the creation of this loving and joy-filled community. For these and for all things, we thank you, Spirit, and peace be with you. Amen and namaste. Amen. Amen. And we have a beautiful song, Let It Go and Let It Flow. from the Aramaic. Let's say this all together. Father, Mother, Earther, and Breath of All, create a space inside us and fill it with your presence. Let oneness now prevail. Your one desire then flows through ours as energy fills all form. Give us this day our physical and spiritual nourishment and untangle the knots of error that bind us as we release others. Do not let appearances make us forgetful of the source, but free us to act appropriately. From age to age, through you, flow the glorious harmonies of life. May these words be fertile statements through which our future grows. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Ah, and we've got our wonderful daily word. I didn't know that this was a publication of Unity for the first uh, six years I was reading it. <laughs> so it tells you how, uh, how it can get around the world. Uh, our affirmation today, uh, well, our word today is free. And our affirmation is, I am one with the freeing, guiding force of God. And we'll say that at the end together. When I think of freedom, I imagine a bird in flight. Soaring above the earth. As the bird glides, it seems to effortlessly move through the air. Then it flaps its wings, moving upward and forward against the force of gravity. Likewise, I open my mind and my heart, and I feel the freeing force of God within. 
This force is powerful and peaceful, and I give myself over to it. As I do, I overcome stifling feelings of stress or doubt. I trust in God, and I move forward and upward with renewed purpose and confidence. Just as a bird overcomes gravity to fly with purpose, I overcome the challenges and circumstances of my life to find my purpose and live from my divine nature. I am free. And from Hebrews 13, 6, So we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Let's say the affirmation together. I am one with the free guiding force of God. Let's say that. I am I one with the free guiding force of God. Now we have each time.
love to bring up now our beautiful Reverend Margaret, who will be giving our meditation and our message on the power of release. like so much gratitude you're just all full up yeah. Yeah. I mean really <laughs> coming out here this morning uh, people carrying food into the barn for the potluck the musicians are out here singing and just sounding like perfection <laughs> yay music team yeah. <laughs> and seeing everything so beautiful. And we just want to pause and talk about how we can see everything so beautifully through these clean vinyl curtains. <laughs> Would the vinyl curtain cleaning team please stand? <laughs> you know, all of you, all of you who were out here yesterday. It was a party. It was a work party. And Maria didn't stand, and neither did Sally. I understand. Uh, and Anton, did you stand? I yes. Stood there. I, I should stand. Well, while you're standing again, because I didn't say sit down. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done this in a long time. Ken, stand up. We, we we really want to do this for everybody who's out here working so hard all the time. But this morning we're going to focus on the vinyl curtain cleaning team. And for those of you who know the Unity Blessing, please say it with me now. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, we behold the Christ in you, and we love you exactly as you are. Woo! We love you. Thank you so much. If we were doing that nonstop for all the people out here helping, that's all we would do. So, thank you. Um, that song that they just sang is really the whole message, so we can just end now and go to pop. <laughs> I feel your love inside of me. I feel your love. You know, when I feel the worry, I feel your love inside me. You know, let it go. Just, I feel your love. Sing that one phrase again. I feel your love inside me. I feel your love surrounding me. I feel your love in everything I do. I feel your love every time I breathe. I feel your love every time I breathe. Now there is a spiritual practice. I feel your love every time I breathe. So we are going to have a meditation, but I just want to have a little prelude. And that is, yesterday Pam and I were visiting and I was reading her some poetry from this wonderful book of, uh, called The Gift. And it's translations of the poetry of Hafiz, great Persian teacher and uh, it was actually translated by someone who lives in this Myrtle Beach community, Daniel Ladinsky. He's a part of the Mayor Baba Center. And we were talking about all the ways you and I, or many of the ways that you and I, pretend that we don't know who we are. And the many ways our species will pretend that that love is not living inside of us and that we'll pretend we are not the light of the world. We're adorable, yes? <laughs> so I'd like you to contemplate a few ideas. That we are walking around kind of like God in drag. <laughs> and Pan said, you know, really who we are, we are the essence of our perfect beingness. We are the essence of our perfect beingness. 
we are each one of us seeing a little tiny bit of the huge light we are. And so we might come up to each other and say, show me more. Let me see more light. You know, we, we show a little bit of the essence of this hugeness that we are. So I have a poem to read to you by Hafiz. It's called The Sun in Drag. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> And I had some glasses once, but I'm not sure where they are now. So um, we're just, oh, here they are. Thought I might have to pray for a miracle. Let's see. Let's see if I can. Hold on. You are the sun in drag. You are God hiding from yourself. Remove all the, quote, mine and yours that is the veil. Why ever worry about anything? Listen to what your friend Hafiz knows for certain. The appearance of the world is a Magi's brilliant trick, though its affairs are nothing into nothing. You, my friend, are a divine elephant with amnesia. <laughs> trying to live in an ant hole. <laughs> sweetheart, oh sweetheart, you are God in drag. <laughs> Shall I read that again? Yes. 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 <laughs> this time I'll read it with glasses. <laughs> we'll see how much of it I got correct. Okay, you are the sun in drag. You are God hiding from yourself. Remove all the mine and the yours that is the veil. Why ever worry about anything? Listen to what your friend Hafiz knows for certain. The appearance of this world is a Magi's brilliant trick, though its affairs are nothing into nothing. You are a divine elephant with amnesia trying to live in an ant hole. Sweetheart, oh sweetheart, you are God in drag. Ah, and if anyone feels upset by that, I know you love me enough to forgive me, so let's move on. Okay. Love it. So let's take a deep breath. Ah, feel that love in each breath that we take. We take a deep breath into the silence. We take a deep breath into that reservoir of healing life energy, that river of life energy that moves through every cell, every atom of our being. That one presence waits for our call to renew and restore and regenerate, to move through us enlivening Increasing that beautiful life energy. We take another deep breath into this divine idea that we are the essence of our perfect beingness. Everyone we see is the essence of perfect beingness. Whatever costume you're wearing, whatever disguise, whatever emotion is moving through them, whatever mental attitude, whatever event may have dampened their zeal for life, everyone we gaze upon is the essence of perfect being. So we take another deep breath and we reflect on this divine idea. We are the essence of perfect beingness.
So we take another healing breath. We hold all those that we're holding in prayer, we hold them in our heart with blessing, with love, with peace. We see them in their spiritual strength, their physical and emotional strength and well-being. All those near and far who've written in for prayer, called for prayer, emailed for prayer, all those we're holding in our hearts, family and friends, community, those that we don't know personally, we know them though in our hearts because we are all in this united, loving presence. Thanks for remembering that we are the essence of perfect beingness. You are the essence of perfect beingness. Turn to somebody right now and say, You are the essence of perfect beingness. That is not what my Southern Baptist preacher said to me, however. <laughs> And I'm just wondering where he is right now, so I can call and tell him. There you are. There you are. <laughs> that was good. So let us set an intention that with our words or with our thoughts, with our presence, with our energy, with our hugs, with the way we gaze on each other, that we are seeing one another as the essence of perfect beingness. That is a kindness that we can give to one another and to ourselves. When, when I'm doing an assessment, how am I doing? How am I doing with these 12 powers? You know, there's nothing that takes you to your knees like being the person talking about the 12 powers. Because <laughs> it's like, dang, <laughs> I've got some work to do. So it's a, a wonderful, truthful gift that we can give to ourselves to take an assessment now and then. How am I doing spiritually? How am I doing emotionally? How am I doing mentally? How am I doing in this idea of knowing myself as the light of the world? How am I doing with that? You know, I need, we have Dr. Phil in our lives. How are you doing with that? How are you doing with knowing yourself as the light of the world? And we may have the occasional moment when we forget. So we are studying this book, both in our Wednesday book group and our Sunday series, Adventures in Resilience by Unity Minister Sharon Connors. And she has couple this idea of resilience with the 12 powers that our founders taught about, the 12 capacities within us. And of course there's more than 12, you know, it's the 12 that Charles Fillmore identified and paralleled the 12 powers to the 12 disciples and, and the 12 chakras and the colors and he did a whole study of that. And so last week we talked about uh, the power of divine order. And this author said, divine order is a sorting out kind of energy that focalizes right outcomes, right action, right thinking, right emotions. It brings everything back into balance. Divine order, that's a good thing, right? Yeah. To be in balance. And it works with the power that we're talking about today, the power of release. This is Charlene's favorite power. <laughs> we did a 12 powers class at the church years ago, and every time she chose a power, it's the power of elimination. The power of elimination. She said, I want another power. <laughs> so the power of release, or the power of elimination, the power of renunciation. No, we're not going to call everybody into the priesthood. You're not going to have to renounce everything you love. But there is this idea of the power of release. So it's the writing, whatever needs to be righted to bring into order. So that's our physical, our digestion, our absorption, our elimination. How many of you are doing some kind of cleansing diet or fast or uh, program? 
uh, it's a good thing to release the poisons from the body, right? It's good to talk about that right before potluck. <laughs> <laughs> and also the release, you know, of the emotions that are detrimental to us. They deplete our life energy, right? We yes. have those emotions. And our thoughts, the mental. You know, how many of us have hit ourselves in the forehead? Don't be thinking that again. You know, just, what was I thinking? Surprising we don't have a little dent right here. <laughs> So we want to really, and then of course the spiritual. How many of us have let go of old religious ideas to open us more to the ever-expanding spiritual presence and beingness that we are? We have to let go along the way of things that maybe we no longer see as truth. So this is what this author, Sharon Connors, writes about the power of release. The power of divine release engenders renewed resilience. So if we are giving ourselves over to the power of release, we can expect renewed resilience. It cleanses mind and heart. It shape shifts our thinking while freeing our hearts of fear, resentments, and all manner of life-depleting emotions and memories. It is as if we wipe the hard drive of our mind clean of junk files. Yes. Right? Like Bob, my brother-in-law, Bob Shipman, he recently took his laptop to the computer guys to, you know, clean and wipe clean. Right, Bob? To put it back in shape. So it would be nice if we had a place we could go, right? <laughs> wipe away the junk files. Wipe, wipe away the emotions that go with old memories where we felt wounded or we felt hurt or resentment or regret, right? Yes. We do have one. We do have one. Imagine that right inside of us. Inside of us? I can't imagine. We can't. Goodness, it's all right there. Like a spiritual eraser. You know, Kathy Hatch one time years ago when you were on the board, Kathy, you arrived at one board meeting with a little package of erasers, you know, that you put on the tip of your pencils. Remember? You remember how excited I got? Like, oh, I love erasers. <laughs> I love using pencils. I love erasers. Well, we have a spiritual eraser, a capacity called release. And all of us get to this moment, I know you have, I have, where it's just like, I don't want to hold on to that anymore. I'm done with that. That's taken too much of my joy, too much of my peace. I, pff, let it go. Let it go. What a relief. And then I asked myself, now you could have done that 10 years ago. Is there, you know, what were you gaining holding on to that? So here's the other thing it's good to talk about before potluck. Uh, the power of release is like a spiritual rotor rooter. <laughs> and I could do you all a favor and sing the little commercial song that used to go with that. <laughs> so, it brings up the sludge of what needs to be released. Now, what could possibly need to be released from me, from you? Well, things like residual, unfinished business, incomplete communications, unhealed hurts, unmet expectations, resentments, regrets, So yesterday, the cleaning of the vinyl curtains. It's a wonderful metaphor for releasing old ways of viewing the world. Or releasing old ways of viewing some event, some circumstance, something that happened between you and someone else, something where there were probably 10 different stories of what happened to let go of that. So a metaphor for cleansing the doors of perception.
cleansing the windows that we're looking through, seeing one another, seeing the world, because we sure can make up stories, can't we? So we want to deepen into the truest peace by seeing the world more clearly. So, I have a story about seeing the world a little more clearly. I know we all do. We all have our moments, our aha moments. And it has to do with coleslaw, <laughs> as it happens. <laughs> as you know, last week we harvested our first cabbage crop. We harvested our one cabbage that we grew out here in the raised beds. <laughs> and it's now over in the barn in a bowl called coleslaw. <laughs> and the whole time I was making the coleslaw yesterday, I was so grateful for this cabbage. So grateful for the sunshine and the water and the care, people talking to it, loving on it. This green team, they're, they're healers and miracle workers. So years ago, uh, when I was in Russia for two weeks, mid-80s, we started in Leningrad and we quickly realized that everything we were being given to eat by the, you know, in the hotel was soft and mushy. And every couple of meals we get a little tiny bowl, I mean tiny, of shredded cabbage. And we were all like, oh, do you want your cabbage? <laughs> you know, you, you want something crunchy after a while, right? You want something green and live and crunchy. And we just weren't finding it. It was mostly potatoes and cooked cabbage and stew of some kind. And so one day, a few other folks and I decided we're going to go exploring in Leningrad. We feel brave. And we're going to see if we can find, oh, I don't know, something open where we can get some green, crunchy stuff. Many of y'all ever, like, you've been traveling and you, okay. So we went off to explore for crunchy food. We got uh, an address from one of the hotel workers of where the taxi driver was going to take us. And... Uh, there were supposed to be like little eateries in the area that the locals liked. So the taxi driver dropped us off. We got out on the corner and we looked around and there were no eateries. There were no stores. <laughs> there were only high-rise apartments. And we were this little group of about six Americans, you know, in a huddle trying to figure out, well, what do we do now? You know, if you, when you know, when you speak Spanish or Italian or French, you can kind of figure out the different languages where you are, but not in Russia, no. No, that was a whole different alphabet. So we must have looked awfully confused, and this uh, man came running through the courtyard and speaking in very broken English, come up, come up, <laughs> and he's pointing to this apartment, this high-rise building, and there were people at the window going, <laughs> come on. So we went up, we followed him to his apartment, his wife welcomed us, and we sat down at the table, and they served us tea, and then knocks on the door, and other neighbors were arriving, and everybody who arrived had these special cookie tins and cake tins and these, these bowls of very special food, and uh, they were setting it all out on the table, and it didn't take me long to realize that the people arriving were arriving with food that they had been saving for a special occasion. And we realized that we Americans were the special occasion. And at that time, I was a complete vegetarian. I only drank a little wine now and then. And so they started putting food in front of us. Some of it looked, it was potted meat. That's all I can say. <laughs> it was just potted meat. And I felt myself not want to eat that. And I heard a message, do not turn your nose up at anything. So I blessed my food. I ate what... I don't know, it could have been roadkill, I don't know. It was in a little pot of, it kind of looked like 
mashed up Vienna sausage, something like that. And I ate it and I loved it. It was so good. And they placed before us cold vodka, which I had to be nice. And, and, yeah, I had to be a good guest, so I helped them drink their cold vodka. Now here's what I had to do to enjoy that meal. I had to give a few things up. I had to release my attitude about any judgment I had about anything that I was eating or drinking. I had to, it was not a moment to talk to these people about the health benefits of not eating meat. It was receive with gratitude what has been placed before you. These are gifts that mean a lot to the people who've given them. Yes. Get your mind right was the message from my eternal spiritual presence. And so I had to give up that attitude about what I was eating. I had to give up my attitude about drinking vodka at the time. You know, it's not a time for me to say, oh, you know, I don't drink hard liquor, thank you so much. No, it was, thank you so much. It was a great gathering, I have to tell you. I heard someone last week make a statement. Russians are bad people. I actually heard someone say that last week. See, for me to be in Russia and be with those people, I had to release an idea that Russians were our enemy. And it's interesting with current events how that idea, I hear it coming up in different places. Russians are not bad people. Our governments make bad choices. And we get caught up in unclear thinking and we make decisions out of fear. So today we're practicing releasing this idea of any one person or group being bad. We want to lean into the unity principle that we all have the divine within us. And the divine is good. We all have this inherent goodness in us to remember that about each other. But I had to release that idea that they're that they were enemies. I mean, a lot of us were raised with duck and cover drills. The Russians are coming, oh my, oh my. And so we have to release those ideas, I feel. Release our preferences. You know, the, there's a, we used to speak at a center in Bend, Oregon, the Spiritual Awareness Center. And upstairs of their little church, there was a Buddhist group that met. And over the door, of that Buddhist uh, door said, wake up, stay present, pay attention, and release the outcome. It's a formula. You know, we have, we set intention to wake up, be awake, we set intention to stay present. You know, we, we drift about a thousand times a day. <laughs> stay present and pay attention. Attention. Otherwise, we're only going to see what we think we're going to see. We can be surprised when we're paying attention. And release outcome. Ooh, that's the one. Release how spirit's going to bring this together. We pray, and then we set intention, and we do our part. NYOB. NYOB. In the middle there, it's, you ask, M-Y-O-B, mind your own business, and be open to receive. <laughs> so we pray, and then we, we pay attention with curiosity and awe at how universe is going to work things together. <clears throat> so there were two people that I met that night, Irina and Igor, <laughs> and we ended up writing letters in their behalf for their possible immigration to America way back then, which they eventually did. So what we're talking about today is the power of release, and one of the biggies that we are asked to release is our need for control. 
and I'm going to look down here so I don't see all the people looking up at me. <laughs> so I was telling the folks at the Unity Ministers meeting last week, I said, you know, it's the most, and by the way, they're talking about us, the Southeast region, the, the Unity Ministers of the Mid-Atlantic States, which Gervais helped found years ago, they're talking about us. We've given them something to talk about. And the word on the street is they meet in a screened porch. <laughs> and you can hear the birds. And you can see out. And everybody loves it. Yeah. And they've got land. And they're putting in daylilies and raised beds. And Wally White, the unity minister at Greensboro, he's now telling his folks, we don't want to just look for a building. We want a screened porch. <laughs> So in thinking about these powers, all these powers we've been talking about, the powers within us create awareness about our capacities. They create an awareness of when we're strong in these powers and when we're weak in these powers and where our work is. So preparing for this talk today, and this is my confession, it doesn't leave this room. <laughs> When we are preparing for something like a talk like this, we are given our own work to do, like Anton's preparing for the drum dance in June up in Pennsylvania. There's a process that starts moving around in us, so all week it's been moving around in me, that I have some work to do on a past wounding. Right? Any of you doing that kind of work? And when I think of those involved, sometimes I feel uneasy in my gut. You know what I'm talking about? I feel a level of not being comfortable or trustful. Right? And I, what I need to know and what I've been practicing, practicing this week is I can have those feelings, uneasiness, Maybe a feeling that I need to kind of, you know, put the light of protection around me. I can, I can have those feelings, but also lean into forgiveness, lean into understanding, lean into release of judgment, can't I? Yes. All those things can live in us at once. The question for me and for you is, can we walk in awareness, discerning right and purposeful action, with forgiveness and still set our boundaries, holding awareness that we are all the light of the world. Those involved with this event, me, them, we're all the light of the world. And I can still set my boundaries and still lean into forgiveness, asking for understanding, right? Yes. Sometimes we see it as either or. I'm doing my work, I'm walking as the light of the world, and the essence of my pure beingness, my perfect beingness. And I'm still doing my work, as you are. So releasing the way we thought it would be or should be and opening our hearts to what is and what is becoming. So here's what our founder, <coughs> Charles Fillmore, said about release. He said it's a letting go of old thoughts in order that new thoughts may find a place in our consciousness. Is that good? Yep. Yep. Amen. It's a healthy state of mind attained when the thinker willingly lets go the old thoughts and takes on the new. Illustrated by the inlet and outlet of water. Like we have a little lake behind our townhouse, and it actually connects with the Waccamaw. And so we get a little bit of the tidal action in that water, and we get alligators. And yesterday we had a lurking alligator. I told Sally on the phone, that he's lurking. I was calling David, come get Bella, there's a lurking alligator. Yeah. So it occurred to me, I'm working on this talk, I was holding vigil looking for the alligator. 
And you know, there are great spiritual teachers in the world that, that tell us that we need to pay attention to, you know, the thoughts because we can, with one word, cause so much damage. We can, with one attitude, with one judgment, set a course of events that are unfortunate and hurtful. So we want to watch, like I was watching for that alligator, we want to watch, stay present, pay attention. The center of renunciation in our abdomen is a place where we can feel the rightness or the wrongness in the moment, the, 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 what our right action needs to be. We have our own barometer of when we're leaning into the right and perfect action for us in that moment, don't we? Yes. I mean, how many of us said, I knew in my gut I shouldn't have done that? Right? How many? See? What, how good confession feels? So, Catherine Ponder, she's one of our great unity teachers, has been around a long time. I'm pretty sure she's close to what? 95, 98, what? 95. She's talking about the 12 powers, and she said, we're talking about the evolution of change. And in the power of release, what was once there is now something else. The remains of what was once there is now a fossil, an empty shell, a skeleton. It is, to use Dr. Ponder's analogy, a vacuum that has made way for evolution. It's a new form or expression of life. In other words, we give up the old. That's a fossil now. Interesting to look at. Interesting to analyze, that old thought form, that's kind of like a fossil. Interesting that I used to hold that thought, that belief, but it's just a fossil now. I don't need to keep referring back to it. I'm just going to put it down over there. I release it. I let go of that idea that that person hurt me or that group did me wrong. I count it as the learning experience that helped open my heart and mind to the fullness of who I truly am. That was a learning event. The whole thing for me, this whole life thing, is a great big training of masters in training, really. We're spiritual masters in training. It's not all going to come from books. It comes from our life experiences. The letting go. So one more story and then we let go. Okay? Into the potluck moment. Uh, still in, I hear a loud ringing sound. Do y'all hear that? It's a jet plane. Jet. Is it a UFO? No. no. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I won't hear that. Oh, no. It's, okay, got it. The New Jerusalem coming down. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're still in Russia. We have been a week in Leningrad, so we get on the train that night and make our way to Moscow. And uh, sleeping on a train, how wonderful that is for those of you who've done that. So we make our way to Moscow. We left sunny Leningrad, and early that morning, uh, it was just dawn. The light was just starting to break, and people were getting out of their sleeping compartments and, you know, with their bunny slippers and making their way to the windows, looking out. And Moscow was not light and cheery. And pulling into the train station back then, I don't know if it's still the same, but it kind of looked like pulling into the train station of Washington, D.C. <clears throat> there were people without homes who were warming themselves at fires in big uh, burn barrels. And it looked pretty bleak. And the sun was not out. It was overcast just to make it all the more intense. And it was... We started pulling into the train station and the Soviet guards... I mean, they look really stern and scary. And that's when my old ideas of Russia being the enemy started resurfacing. And I looked at Alan Cohen, our guide, and I said, what, why are we here? Tell me again. What was the reason we came? Said, oh, we're Soviet-American diplomats for peace. We're here to bring peace. 
okay, got it. <laughs> and we pulled into the train station and we all we started debarking the pl uh, train. And you know, Americans are known for traveling with way too much luggage. Inner and outer. And we were pulling our luggage, you know, through the train station. Heavy, heavy luggage. And our emotional baggage was really apparent. We were scowling at the Soviet guards who appeared to be scowling. And then one among us remembered that he was the light of the world. His name is Michael. And his experience this lifetime has included Down syndrome. And we were walking through the train station, all looking very sour, and Michael began to sing, God bless America! <laughs> and we all did what you just did. And the Soviet guards did what you just did. We all burst out laughing, and suddenly there were hands extended, shaking hands, hugs, glad you're here. It changed everything. <laughs> That's what the power of release does. That's what we can look forward to when we set intention to release those ideas, those beliefs, those old judgments and resentments that are no longer helping us survive. They're debilitating, and so we release them. Is that a good idea? Yeah. That's the power of release. So y'all, let's take a deep breath. I'm gonna bring Reverend Gervais up here to do the the part about releasing of our green energy from our pockets into the offering place. And we take a deep breath for all those in the world who are ready to release old ideas and open up to more healing ideas, and we bless them this day. Namaste. Namaste. I was thinking when you started off there with the uh, health is, uh, well, that back in the 70s, Ram Dass said he was pulled over by a highway patrol. And as the highway patrolman was coming to his car, he says, uh oh, here comes God in drag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 if you have not uh, yet turned in your pledge for the air conditioning, uh, we'd like for you to get that as quickly as possible because we think they're going to be installing it this week. So uh, let's take our tithes and offerings and hold them in our hand. And remember that you cannot outgive God. It doesn't deplete you to give. So let's give our blessing to them and see that they move through this ministry doing its perfect work. Thank you, God, for the abundance that flows into our lives, moment by moment, day by day. And so it is. Amen. Amen. There was a time. You said that over again. You that good? <laughs> there was a time in my life. I thought I'd have to do it all myself. And I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient. And I didn't know the love of God was at hand. But now I can say, if you are discouraged, struggling just to make it through another day, you've got to let it go. Let it go. This is what you have to say.
give our final blessing to the offering as we see these tithes and offerings moving through this ministry, doing its perfect work, so that more and more people can hear this wonderful message of release, this message of love and peace and harmony. And then we see these tithes and offerings returning to each giver. Not as they gave, but he got pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. 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 Woo. Thank you, Carolyn. All righty. Here we are at our favorite spot. And let's see what the announcements are. So we welcome everybody. And we especially welcome first-time visitors. If you would like to stand and give us your name and where you're visiting from. Uh, your blood type and your social security. <laughs> <laughs> your name and where you're visiting from. Anybody? First time, I know we have Jennifer and then we have Jennifer. I mean, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I rename everybody. Please don't take it personally. Jessica and Jessica, can you stand? Where are you visiting from? Ruby. Ruby. Oh, so I right. just let her see you. Hello, hello. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? First time visitor? Anybody? Okay, going once, going twice? All right. We have a prayer box here in the building that you can write your prayer request on. You can also call, you can email, but right back here is the box. And our team will pray with you and also send those prayer requests to Silent Unity for 30 more days of prayer. Our May month at a glance, the schedule of what we're doing is that's on the back table. Everything's on the back table. Our Wednesday book group meets here 12 to 1.30. Only this week, we probably won't be in the pavilion. We'll probably be in the uh, big room of the house or on the front porch because I hear there's AC units coming probably on Wednesday. We'll see. Uh, next Sunday, guess who our Mother's Day speaker is going to be? Well, if you've seen the May month at a glance, you know. Gianni. 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 Gianni Guijo, Executive Director of the Carolina Human Reinvestment Center and founder of the Polly's Island Community Garden. And when I asked him to be the Mother's Day speaker, he said, me? <laughs> I said, yes, because you have the heart of zeal and the heart of the mother for taking care of the earth and her people. Who better to be a Mother's Day speaker? This fan, I'm going to bring it next week because it's from Ghana, which is where Gianni and his family are from. Ghana. Isn't it a work of art? Yeah. It's yes, beautiful. It's I got it at the art show at Market Common. Okay, you all know that our potluck is today. Everybody's welcome over in the barn. Tonight, this is a big day. Reminds me of the Pentecostal days, church all day. <laughs> Tonight at 6.30, Anton Knoll is going to facilitate the fire ceremony. Yes. So um, this fire ceremony was created decades ago by Grandfather Joseph Rael, who is a um, First Peoples author, visionary, and artist. Um, this ceremony is for the cleansing of the oceans. So it's every month at the 7th. And you will be joining, or we will be joining, more than 70 peace chambers on six continents, more than thousands of individuals, at the same time, all praying for the cleansing of the oceans, the cleansing of the waters of the planet. And of course, we are the metaphor of the planet. We're both two-thirds water. So we're actually praying for ourselves. This is a silent meditation. Um, and it runs, once we light the fire, usually 20, 25 minutes. So be there at 6.30, bring your chair. So you have some place to sit around the fire pit, um, jackets, sweatshirts if needed, blankets, and this is for a love offering. Thank you. It's going to be a long day, but I'm going to go home, take a power nap, and come back because I want to be a part of it. Six thirty. Oh, and there's a on the back table. There's a flyer. <laughs> on the back table. Okay, and then the June tenth event. There's a sign up list if you want to help, volunteer, put your name and number. And uh, we have some other announcements because so Reverend Dr. Cassandra Butler, something's happening yeah, we're here, have to change that. Uh, is the chair of the wonderful event. Good morning. Um, I'm 
we need to say something because I hope there's not a misunderstanding for the event. For the healing practitioners, whether it's Reiki, massage, or chair yoga, you must submit a vendor application. I know people are approaching me in person, but I'm following the paperwork. So unless you submit an application, I can't assign a location for you. Thank you. That's the word from the big boss. Yes. <laughs> Get your paperwork in. Hello. Mine's going to be a little bit longer, okay? Just a little bit. You can still say standing, Margaret. <laughs> number, number one, as all of you or most of you know, we've been doing outreach for a long time, for years as a matter of fact. Our organizations have been Family Justice Center, Helping Hand, Help for Kids, and anybody else that needs it at this point in time. Help for Kids now has 2,700 kids they serve a week, okay? There's a list back there of all the organizations that need your help and support. Reaching out to Help for Kids is one of the major organizations we should reach out to. Um, second, we are moving along in Burgess Community Garden. 90% of the garden is indeed planted. We had quite a few volunteers, and some of those volunteers came from outside of the Unity Church. So we were happy to see them. Both Ken and I were happy to see them. Okay, we've got about two or three more beds to build currently, and we'll be working toward building those in the next number of weeks. One of the things in building the beds, I said every time I lifted one more wheelbarrow of Oh no, dirt. <laughs> that God just send me six people. God just send me six people. Just six people, just for outreach. We also concurrently did a brochure, and normally you expect 10% return. So I, I mailed about 560, 600 brochures. So I was hoping to see 60% people, whatever their form took in terms of services, money, whatever is the case. One person responded, okay? And then this week, earlier this week, some of you all know Living Local Carolina. Do you know that channel? 13? Okay. So they do a segment on different new business, new places, new things to know in the community. So we, I received an outreach email last earlier this week about we'd like to support you and sponsor you and come out and interview you about Burgess Community Garden. Oh, I shared it with Margaret. We we're going to be speaking with them on Wednesday. So I didn't just get my six people. I didn't just get 60. I got the whole audience. And how did it happen? An account executive that lives in the Burgess community works for WBDW. And he said, this is something y'all might be interested in. He got the brochure. He got the brochure. Okay, so not only the six, not the 60, but a whole viewing audience. So again, thank you, God. It's the first thing I said. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> And that's it for the time being. Thank you. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. Let's just give our unity blessing to this one who's been holding the high watch for what's happening with Burgess Community Gardens. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. We behold the Christ in you. We love you exactly the way you are. Okay. All right. Have we gotten all the announcements? Is that everything, y'all? Uh, next Monday, the 15th, is our Monday Song Circle. Next Monday... The 15th is our Middle Monday, Monday Song Circle. It moved from First Monday to Middle Monday. And we want to, I think she's already gone over to Potluck. Carol DeLude is back with us. Give her an extra hug today. Um, she's been our Potluck uh, queen, and Ken has been helping for so many years at the old building. But So a lot of things get carried out to the barn long before you all get here, before service. So we're going to do Potluck, and then afterwards... Any of you who want to help carry things back into the building, you know, the coffee stuff, the water jugs, every back into the building, and bag up garbage, you know, your help is delightfully received. And so we thank you for that. And Dan, we want to welcome you back. And, and you, need, you need to get to a mic to... I don't know if you all can hear me just real quick. Thank you all so much. For the no, we can't. Come up here. Yeah. Get a mic. Get a mic. Get Pam's mic. There you go. I don't want to strangle you. <laughs> Thank you all so much for the kindness and concerns and prayers regarding Cassandra. She's back home, but we still have a long way to go. Just very quick, I wanted to let you all know that. Thank you so much. Okay, y'all, we are going to end with our updated prayer of unity, then our peace song, then potluck. Thank you, everybody. 
So together, the light of God surrounds us, the presence of love enfolds us, the power of peace protects us, and the one presence that lives within all creation enlivens us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, God is, and all is well. That's the truth. Now we stand for our peace song. We sing it like a prayer.